Most bankers aren't ready to help you until after their third cup of coffee. But with Central National Bank's after-hours service, you don't have to wait for the bank lobby to open to get help. You can contact us from 6 to 8.30 in the morning or from 5 to 10 in the evening, and we'll connect you to a real, live, local person who can answer questions and fix problems seven days a week. Bank different. Bank central. Central National Bank. Member FDIC. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Frozen, Frozen, Heroes, gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, Heroes, gonna tell you about comic books, costumes, facts, boots, and other stuff. In this week's issue, the Red Bee, buzz buzz. Welcome into Bros, Foes, and Heroes. I'm Zach, joined as always by the, it doesn't start with an M, but uh, the buzzing one. Mm, the I, buzz. I don't know if that works. Sure. The, it, it does for this. Uh, Mr. Mike. Molting? Maybe. Maybe. I'm trying to maybe keep it. Maybe, Mike. <laughs> maybe. I'm trying to keep it uh, insect-centric, yeah. but more importantly, yeah. bee-centric for today's episode. Bee-centric. Um, just to set up a little bit, obviously this doesn't work too well for an audio podcast, and yeah. we have dabbled with video a little bit in the past, yeah, and we we'll will again there. more in the we'll future, but uh, part of the setup that we have that we will for the moving forward, um, at least to explain to you, yeah. so in the studio we are, we have a giant TV, and I've projected the uh, computer onto the TV so Mike can see exactly then everything we're talking about. You make it sound like a magic trick. You, I do. You well, projected it is. It. I did. It's a lot of magic. <laughs> Mike, we're a uh, comic book podcast. I, I get like, that. I have to make it sound That's bigger true. than it is. That's true. Um, but, and the reason I did that is because I do not have physical copies of this because yeah. we are taking a Who dive. Who the hell does? I've, Who I'm has sure copies of this? Maybe somebody somewhere. <laughs> well, they have to because I got this. Uh, I do want to give a shout out, I guess, before I dive into all this. Uh, we're d- going back to the 1940s. 1940 exactly, I'm pretty sure. Wow. For when Hit Comics came out. Uh, yeah, July of 1940. I wonder what Hitler thought of this. Uh, well, I mean, we're not a part of World War II yet, mm-hmm. if it's 1940. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, but you know he was, he was reading comics. Well, they Hitler are a big, comics. They are a big villain of this time during all comic books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But we are taking a look at a character named the Red Bee. The His Red alter Bee. ego is Richard Riley. Okay. Um, or just Rick. But the Red <laughs> to Bee his friends. from Quality Comics back in 1940, July 1940, was his first appearance in Hit Comics number one. And that lasts for 24 appearances. Ah. So he's in 24 issues. So essentially for two years, from 1940 to 1942. You can read about the Red Bee every month in quality comic, uh, okay. in the hit comics. Um, and then he just kind of goes away, and DC acquires quality comics stuff. Uh, I think it's around the time of, like, the Watchmen and stuff. Okay. Because Alan Moore originally wanted to use the quality, or maybe that was the Charlton comics. I could be confusing two stories. Yeah. There was one. Uh, it's the DC, same kind of thing. Though. It kind of is, yeah. but there is a story of where, like, some of the older comic book characters that dc bought yeah. like alan moore wanted to use those characters for watchmen and dc was like well we just bought these characters rights so we don't know about you killing them off like right before we get to use them <laughs> on anything else yeah. and so he created his own because peacemaker i'll mm. give a tie in next week we're going to talk about the new peacemaker series nice um but peacemaker was one of the charlton comic characters that alan moore wanted to use kind of like the comedian and they're like now nah, we have other ideas for him so anyway yeah, this is crazy. Like, I, I I love this old stuff because you can see the overprinting of the colors and all that. You know, it's just oh, very much. So. It's very cool. Like, um, it takes you way back. A, a little bit more backstory then to the Red B because he did make another appearance later on. Okay. Um, he was I think in the eighties. It was all stars. I'm gonna have to look this up. Uh, he fought with. They had a patriotic team that was like Uncle. No. Led by Uncle Sam. What is it here? Uh, DC bought other quality comics characters. Uh, I'm trying to look it up. I can't remember the name of the series, but he does come back to DC in the 80s um, and is inevitably killed in the series that he comes back into. Really? Yeah. Um, I think he's pull his stinger out or what? All-Star Squadron, maybe? Why can I not find what I'm looking for when I need it? 
Um, but yeah, so they essentially use him for a, oh, Freedom Fighters. There we go. Also, oh. He was part of All Star Squadron that makes and the total, Freedom Fighters. That which makes total sense. Freedom it does, Fighters. especially for characters at this time and age. Um, but yeah, they brought him back. Isn't that what they called the like the guerrilla soldiers in South America? Weren't they Freedom Fighters? I think so. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, it says uh, oh, the character never became very popular and was largely forgotten until he reappeared. We're going to focus on the stuff that was forgotten from the 40s when we dive into it. But he reappeared in DC Comics All-Star Squadron. And in the squadron, it's learned that uh, he was killed by a supervillain named Baron Blitzkrieg. So it had to be a German supervillain there, too. Mm. Uh, while saving the lives of our men and the other allies of the Freedom Fighters. So he kind of sacrifices himself. Uh, it does say that Red B appears as a ghost in the pages of Starman. Oh, very nice. Bad. The focus of this appearance a is a di- as a dinner party attended by many deceased heroes. Other heroes in attendance include the original Mr. Terrific and Our Man. The topic discussed is the intense appeal of the superhero life. And then uh, post-crisis, he had a cameo in Animal Man. And briefly in, where does it say? Oh, Dark Knight's uh, Death Metal, which is a Scott Snyder story that came out within the past like five, six years or so. Red B is among the superheroes that were revived by Batman using a Black Lantern ring. Anyway... Aside from these 24 appearances uh, from Quality Comics, it's been very sparingly, like, one here. And then 12 years later, one random cameo here. Yeah. And then, oh, in the 80s, he was around for, like, four issues. But this is a very kind of forgotten character. Uh, but I think it's definitely up uh, your alley. I know that we like this kind of stuff. So oh, I yeah. thought we would go ahead and dive into some of the Red Bee's adventures. Now, there were 24 issues that he appeared in. I uh, did not do my best this week as a co-host uh, or a host and uh, read all 24. Uh, you can go ahead and scold me for that. But I got I a do, fair sense. I, I feel of like of what we were going to get into with this. I do want to give and I always like to when it comes to these older comics and give a shout out to the website comic book comic book plus dot com that has like a ton of these um, old public domain comic books like all the old Charlton stuff and the quality stuff and just all, if you're looking for, you know, comics from the forties and fifties, they have it there. And it's a yeah. big community that finds and scans these, like finds them out in the wild and scans them in there for like digital versions of it. So oh, cool. Wow. Like it's, you ask at some point That's in time, it is somebody has located all 24 issues of this to be able to compile it together. Uh, but it was still really cool. So shout out to them. And it's a great website. If you want to look into some, old um just like public domain and just 40s and 50s comics i've used it a lot with um the things we've covered and i'm sure i'll use it again so let's go ahead and get into our first appearance here i do like this cover it's very oh wow yeah yeah so hit comics number one red b is actually on the cover from july of 1940 i love his i love his clear uh pirate bags bag arm with like the cufflinks around them <laughs> no just the the baggy arms like well, a pirate shirt but i get but they're like see-through almost. yeah it's like he's got plastic bags on his arms um i'd kind of dig the pants though yeah the stripe well they red and yellow last, stripe. they last only for like four issues uh, and red and yellow kill fella i will also say it shows him shooting a gun uh in all the stories i read never, never used the gun yeah uh but I, it's, I don't it's like a great green, looking cover i don't like the green boots yeah it's a little Christmassy. I don't know. He's kind of got a Mr. Miracle color vibe going on. Yeah, a little bit. Um, Just not then, as cool. Oh, Ooh, I like the guy out, coming up out of the out of the water, though. Other things in that book. Knife, though, in, his, uh, knife in his teeth? Yeah, no, those are guys dead. you don't mess with. Hercules, the strongest man in the world. Blaze Barton, <laughs> Neon the Unknown, and the Strange Twins. The so, Strange Twins. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into... I have into, a couple of Strange Twins in my I've, house. Well, I have brothers that are. Oh, that's right. You have Strange Twins. I do have Strange Twins. So... Twins are just weird, man. They usually, really are. There know. used to be a pair, um, a, a group of twins that worked Double-mint together twins? somewhere, mm. and it was kind of just, they were creepy. So, yeah. yeah. It is. It's weird. It is. Um, I just realized after I'm telling that story that for some reason I don't want to give away too much just yeah, I because wouldn't. Yeah. Um, they might find me. Like, they, they scare me. So, uh, there's got to be some mm. kind of, like, sixth sense they know what well, they're goes, talking that about. That goes with that whole, uh, like, mimic ghost we were talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Where the they twins will just come out him. of a r- dark for you. So uh, the funny thing that I like too is that Red B. It says it's by B H Apiary, mm-hmm. which if you don't know what an apiary is, is a collection of beehives. Yeah. So and I'm assuming the B H stands for beehive, beehive as well. Apiary. So they yeah. thought, hey, let's get a little joke That's in fun. because a lot of times the comic book industry at this time you did not get a lot of credit for art nor 
writing. Why wouldn't you just call the guy the B? Instead of the red B? Yeah, I don't know why he's red. I don't know. Maybe, why does he have to be red? Maybe they like the red color. Yeah, maybe but so. so a lot of... Maybe they had know, some extra ink. <laughs> a lot of artists... <laughs> What's the four colors, Mike? It's all you got. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of artists and writers just did not get credit then at the time because of this. And so you just had like pen names and stuff that were used a lot. Like I think we covered Fletcher Hanks uh, way back yeah. with. And like that was a pen name. Like people would change to move around from things like that. Um, I will say, though, that they believe pretty, you know, uh, rightly so that it was created by Tony Bloom and Charles Nicholas. Uh, Tony Bloom. Who they be is a actually born real name audrey anthony bloom oh. uh, is one of the first female comic professionals oh wow so but had to go by tony but i had to yeah yeah had to go by tony yeah. but like so um so it's nice to see at least like one of the first female names in comics mm-hmm. like be a part of something mm-hmm. like this mm-hmm. but again you don't know because she doesn't sign her name because yeah. it's yeah. Apiary. anyway let's go ahead and get into uh, but not only that i would imagine people just would would go ape shit had they known a woman worked on this oh, comic yeah, because at that time oh for sure well there was another miss fury comes out around that same time that was a uh, mm. what was her name uh, I, Hattie. sally fury no the woman there there were and that was a drawn and i'm pretty sure it's written and drawn both by the same woman and it was the same thing of where wow. like she was one of the first female comic book writers as well that's gotta be so scary to be like the one of the first ones oh and anything you You would think if you just hope that oh i just want to keep making stuff and hope that they don't catch on and be like no you can't do that Mm -hmm. um i don't know uh a lot of great women writers in the comic book industry i just say that because i talked to somebody about gail simone the other day Mm. who uh had a fantastic uh run on deadpool that kind of brought him back in a sense of where sh- her thing was that it's Deadpool zany and he's he's fun but he gets tiring that way mm-hmm. like you have to the dark humor the tragedy and all that like you have to mix them all together really well well to make it work and she had a fantastic run with him too anyway uh back to the red bee so this is going to be your typical just kind of generic uh of a lot of comics at the time of hey Bad things are going on. This guy shows up and just ruins it. Now it's or and, and puts a stop to it. But it's all like things that don't sound like typical comic book problems now. And it's like, well, I say that it's always, uh, you know, uh, uh, problems in a way of people having to deal with uh, crooked politicians or like, you know, uh, like people like trying to uh what was there's one it's like taxpayers they're trying to like steal their money to be able to like feed the rich of like this mob kind of thing it's all just very local kind of oh absolutely I know I'm rambling yeah. but it's not like the no, bigger kind of baddies it's all just like local things at this yeah. point in time yeah so like well again you got to remember this is <clears throat> there's a lot politically going on in the world at this time and so what this whole story is about grifting politicians and crappy people in government and stuff so you know like we talked about yesterday it it, it these kind of things reflect the times yeah I mean, it's just for sure it is, yeah and so this is definitely a setting in the 40s but so what we have here is a group of people and it looks like a lot of people a lot of people are out here picketing uh angered by the slack slack is used a lot too mm. um but grafting administration i guess is the business well, no, I'm thinking grafting, slack meaning lazy, grafting meaning crooked, administration. Oh, they're doing, oh, I see, okay. Do, what, I love, sense now. what I love about the crowd is they're all in a single file line. How, how orderly are they? Except them? for the group that is in the <laughs> road picketing. There's a little ball right in front. Yeah, yeah. it's like. It's so those, weird looking. I guess that's the group that refused to listen to the everybody else. They're like, hey, we're going to well, stand in this line. They're like, no, we want to get closer. The the people with the signs, they just put lines on them. They didn't uh, put words. Yeah, well, that's probably why they're <laughs> like, I don't know what's going on. So uh, the tyrannical boss Storm is the main villain of this one. He looks like a bad guy. He does. It's the glasses. He, the looks, people, like, uh, he looks like uh, Perry White, but with little spectacles like John Lennon. Yep, there Or you Oppenheimer go. or and, somebody. And uh, his cronies are kind of telling him, like, oh, it's a bad sign that they're out there picketing. And he's like, oh, whatever. Let them blow it off. They'll come down. Cake. He's like, I'm running this city, and I say no relief. Mm. We're then introduced to our district attorney, uh, Tom Darrow. Uh, you can try to remember his name. It doesn't matter. You might think, oh, we're being introduced to the district attorney because that's who's going to be the Red B. No, the Red B is his assistant, 
Rick Riley. Mm. So, Wait, but he Rick works, Riley? Rick Riley. <laughs> like uh, Sports Illustrated. Always such stupid names. Um, so, everything's alliterative, man. Yeah, I get it. So, he We works strive for alliteration office. around here. <laughs> exactly. Um, we just like to rhyme stuff with We do bros, like to rhyme things, yeah. Um, All field rappers. <laughs> so... Uh, the DA is just telling him like, Hey, I really need to clean up these rackets. And I kind of, my hands are tied though. I don't know what to do. And, uh, he's like, I know that it's boss storm, but I'm afraid that he's going to ruin my career. Yeah. And Rick tells him like, well, it's time. Like the mob was kicked out of the city and city hall. Like, I think we, we need to go ahead and do something. And so, I think I have a way. And what? so Rick leaves and he goes and he calls the paper and he tells me, he's like, Hey, the daily record, the daily record. And he's like, I'm telling you, the DA is about to blow everything wide open. Well, they, of course, print that story because why wouldn't you? It's got to be the biggest story in town that the DA is about to take down, you know, this corrupt uh, administration. And, of course, Boss Storm sees that. And he's like, what? He has new evidence. Well, I've, I've, I've got to get that new evidence. So He tells he, him to take two men to the guy's house. He does, and to get proof. And they're like, okay, boss, we'll go ahead and do that. And here is very 40s-style uh, bad guys. They're all in matching suits with fedoras and one of them's walking saying there's the house yeah d-e-r-e apostrophe s he's got a house he's got to talk like a gangster there's the house um and then while they're looking out though the district attorney sees that the men are loitering below oh not loitering and he's like i wonder what they're up to and he just decides to call the cops i think one of them jaywalked but but when he calls the cops he's like oh no they've cut my line like i don't know what i'm gonna do oh. and the thugs saunter i love how they saunter, saunter. through through the hall searching for the district attorney's room and they get to a door and they're like, are you sure this is it? And positive. And they go to open it. But as soon as the door opens, mm. a bee flies out. No. And it just says, just says zzz, and it throws the guy off guard enough to where you see a fist, just punch him in the chin. Crack. And then it says, tis, tis, you gents met with an accident. That is his, that is <laughs> his so tagline stupid. after taking out some bad guys. I don't understand his see-through shirt. <laughs> I so don't goofy. either. Here's the thing, too. Wow. What color is his mask, Mike? Uh, it looks like it's black. It's a black domino mask. Uh-huh. Uh, what color was it on the cover? Oh, it was red. Yeah. yeah. All right. So yeah. Those things change. Uh, then the other cronies decide to run away because the DA comes from the adjoining room to be like, hey, what's going on? And they're like, oh, let's, let's scram. They go back scram. To, yeah, they go back to Boss Storm. And he's like, oh, you stupid fools. And he's like, no, nah, man, we were jumped. The guy that says we got jumped, he needs to have that mole looked at. Which, oh, the red one? The big red one by his ear. I think that might just be a printing there. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, and then suddenly the door is open. What? The red bee? So he just like Everybody followed him. Everybody knows who he is. Nobody noticed that he just ran after them behind them. Like, this? I would think, like, look at the floors. Those look yeah. like, it's not carpeted floors. No, you would hear shiny. somebody running after you. Yeah. So it's like they ran down the stairs and they didn't hear him yeah. chasing after him at all or didn't notice. Anyway, they get trailed there. and <laughs> everybody, Everybody's so formal. It's like, I've heard of your work, Mr. 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 Red, Red B. B. <laughs> but it ends here tonight. And he says, maybe. Stealthily, this is something that this happens a lot. He wears dumbest. a belt, right? Uh, but it looks like it looks leather. I guess at other times, so up close, it looks like plastic or metal. The or belt's something. the size of like a WWE championship belt. That's yes. how, it, or a or a freaking full, full uh, on cummerbund. Yeah, well, yeah. even bigger than a cummerbund, kind of. It's almost like a girdle. Yeah, it's a massive belt. But he stealthily uh, opens a catch in his belt and releases a bee. It's a magic belt that it's, holds a bee. That holds a bee, right? <laughs> And then, because he's got a gun held on him, and Boss Storm goes, ow, a bee stung me. So he gets stung on the hand. These guys. And lets go of his gun, and that allows the Red Bee to be able to punch. Well, now, who's who's Red Bee punching? That's the other guy that he followed in there. Okay, because I was going to say, I mean, those are two very different guys. Yeah. And he goes, I guess my work ends here, all right. Well, hang on, Zach. Before that, he says, as he punches him up off the floor, you're number one on the hit parade that's a that, good he's, he's full stuff. of zingers great man. writing he's full of great zingers uh but he goes to boss storm's desk ends up stealing all the ev- the new evidence and he's like yeah. all right i enjoyed this visit and then he leaves and boss storm's like oh he's got all of our records so red b just drops it off at the da's house and he's like hey here's all your proof and then uh apparently red b is batman because da the da just says i took my eyes off him just for a second and he's Disappears. gone yeah just like a bee just like a bee. You know how bees are. 
Yeah, which I will go back to. I still think that's one of my favorite moments of Kingdom Come when we covered it, as small as it is, is where Batman's talking to Superman and turns around and Superman's gone and Batman goes, oh, I guess that's what it feels like. Um, It's the small things. So the DA then takes this new information and gives it to not the daily, not the other paper that they called to say they were doing it. No, this is for the Times Mirror. I don't know if one runs in the afternoon and one runs in the morning, but I remember those times when there were two papers. Yeah, uh, and that kid, of course, the newsy down there, extra, extra, which I think we've talked about before because we've had multiple like stories and stuff where newspaper boys will yell out extra. Oh I yeah, don't know what it means. oh yeah, it's always extra. So, um. Everybody's getting upset, and then they're like, DA, like, well, it's all the suspense. Like, either you produce this evidence that you say that you've got, or it's, you know, your job is over. And he's like, I'm telling you guys, uh, I promise tomorrow the city will be rid of Boss Storm and his vicious racket. Mm. So they decide, all right, Boss Storm goes, the DA is undoubtedly the Red B, right? So yeah. we take out the DA, we take out the Red B, and we're good. They go, they head to his office, and they go and they kidnap him Uh-oh. as he leaves. But little do they know, the Red Bee is watching the entire time. And a slick car pulls up behind, a sleek so, car pulls up behind so them they to follow think, them. So they think they've got the Red Bee. They do. Right. They think, oh, okay. we've got D.A. Darrow, that's the Red Bee. That's the other thing that's disturbing about these these times and these comics. Everybody's really stupid. They are. They're very yeah, stupid. Very stupid. Um, so they find a spot off a cliff with water below and they tie them up and they're just going to toss them off and I guess let them drift down to the bottom and they're like all right so long DA and they throw them away well don't worry Red B is on the other side on the far end of the cliff and he dives into the water after him and he's able to rescue the DA and he saves him right he comes through and he takes him back to his car and the two start trailing the bad guys again and while they're there the Red B looks at the DA and goes hey Take the wheel. I'm going to jump onto their car. And he's like, what? We're going 90 miles an hour. 90? And he's like, I don't care. So, yeah. That's so fast for those big-ass cars they were driving at that point. So, those big cars are moving at 90. The Red Bee opens the door and just jumps from one car to the next. Not I don't o- know where he's hanging not, on at, Mike. Not only does he just jump, he goes, oh, here it goes. And he just tries it. <laughs> he does. And it says the Red Bee slips but regains his balance. Nearly missed that time. Does that mean he has missed before and he's like just tumbled uh-huh. and rolled? Yeah, I'm sure. So he punches both of them with one punch. Two in one sock is what he says. Oh, my God. And somehow is able to pull the car up to a stop. It's probably those sleeves. Maybe. Probably helps Magic with punching sleeves. people in the ear. And he goes, DA, here, take these men in their car. I'll have Boss Storm for you in an hour. And again, he turns around to look at the men and Red Bee disappears. Just like uh, Domino's Pizza. He's going to have you. Yep. A bad guy to you in an hour. So uh, we go back to Boss Storm, and they're like, all right, we're done for, man. Like, they got red. Here's the thing I love, too. They got red and Pete. Those are the two thugs that I guess uh, Red B got. And he can't, like, you can't come up with another name besides Red B. You have to call him Red. 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 Anyway. Mr. Red B. We're going to go ahead and see what happens to Boss Storm and the rest of the Red B adventures. After we come back from break, right here on Bros, Foes, and Heroes. And welcome back to Bros, Foes, and Heroes as we continue our tales of the adventures of the Red Bee. Mm. Um, Let's pick back up where we had... uh, boss storm Mm -hmm. now realizing all right we're done for since they got red and pete like we just got to get out of here and they're going to head to the airport look how high their pants are well very yeah i mean they're up like past their navel like yeah very high high high-waisted pants yeah but you seem like a high-waisted pants guy oh i love a good pair of high-waisted pants and some ska music oh can't get enough i don't know why you hate ska music i don't like it i Mm -hmm. I get that like it all sounds the same okay fine. it's all like polka you know you think all polka sounds the same yeah yeah, yeah. As a German American, I can say all polka sounds the same. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
All right. Uh, <laughs> they decide. I'm not touching that. Well, it does. They decide. Uh, really? You're afraid the polka industry is going to come after you? No, polka is awful. I don't care about that. I really? just don't know what to get into the whole like, oh, yeah, you can say this and that because you're German American. I used to what? No, that's bullshit. I, yeah. it was just, I'm not. I mean, I'm German, but mixed with a hell of a lot of other stuff. But um, I, I, I used to watch the. Um, when I had satellite TV, I would watch the like farm and ranch channel. The Polka King? Wasn't that because they had a polka show on there. I would just turn it on, and it's just the old people dancing to polka while this guy goes, and next on the song, we're going to play the bear, bear, bear. It sounded a lot like, what's the his face? Swedish chef? Is no, like uh, Lawrence Welk. Oh. And now on the show, we're going to play the bear, the bear. That's what Lawrence Welk He does like? sound a lot like that. Yeah, I did, yeah. yeah. Okay. He sounds like this now. Because he's, he's dead. dead. Yeah. 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 Solid joke. <laughs> no, it really I, I, I did appreciate okay. that. Uh, yeah. So they decide, hey, we're going to leave town. We're going to head to the airport uh, and get out of here. So as the racketers uh, arrive, racketeers arrive um, to the plane ready to leave, guess who shows up? Oh, it's the Red oh, B. Oh, it's the Red B. Look at he him go. He is everywhere. He, uh, he, he does a lot of flipping. He does. A nice little sh- shoulder uh-huh. tackle uh-huh. right to the Yeah, right to the groin. Crotch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and well, that guy's face looks like he got hit in the crotch, he too. Does. And then, yeah, he drops, like, on his back, but uh-huh. lifts all the way up to his shoulders. Yeah. To kick. Yeah. He's very, like, it's like gymnastic moves, almost. Oh, um, this gets mean. Look at this. He is. The, well, the guy, the next guy's like, what the? I'll cut his heart out. And Jeez, that's Red a big B, move. He does, and Red B just clobbers him so hard that you can't even see his head. It's just uh, a flash there. He just blew his he head up. Him. Yeah. Um, but. Splooch. Okay, but. Boss Storm does get on the plane. Doesn't matter. Red B jumps up and grabs a hold of the wing. <laughs> this is a guy that struggled to jump from one car to the next, and now he's jumping straight up to plane. Oh, get, and then he's like, hey, and he just grabs him in a headlock, and he goes, gosh, this plane's riding fast, and he's securely holding Boss Storm. He just drops out of the plane. No parachute, no nothing, uh, to the point where everybody else is like, oh, he's going to kill himself. Yeah. Oh, no. We don't see it. We just hear them say, he's reached the ground safely. What a cheap, Amazing. What a cheap way to get the action. The fool, he'll kill himself. Oh, he's reached the ground. Amazing. He's unhurt, and he's making and for a car, dragging some men with him. That's like, that's like ten panels, and they just say it in three sentences. Yes, and instead we just see a silhouette of what <laughs> so looks like funny. two stick figures falling out of plane. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so he's able to make it. These cars the always look the same, too, in these in these comics. They do. While people stare in astonishment, the Red Bee whisks Boss Storm away in a car. And he mm. tells him, like, the DA wants you. Look at the little tiny guys over here with question marks over You're their like, heads. What's going on? <laughs> oh, um, what happened? Talk about a complete lack of background behind uh-huh. them, too. Yeah. Um, I did read in this first one that somebody said that it's kind of, like, shoddily drawn and yeah. just quickly put together. Yeah, and it looks that. like it was an uh, Iger Studios kind of drawing at the time. And what mm. they would do is a lot of these production studios, as they're just sitting in there kind of almost like, you know, um, the line, oh, what's Eli Whitney? Uh, interchangeable part. Cotton but it's gin? like a Yeah, but it's like a... Um, it's just a production line of where it's just like draw, oh, okay. pass the next okay. draw, you know. And it's just like that day, and like they just sit down at tables and draw all the time, just trying to crank out as much as they can. And it's just not like. Yeah, at a certain point, you're just going to draw circles for heads and Exactly. Move on. You're just yeah. drawing to get it because it was all more about speed than quality. A lot of this, time. a lot of this, uh, like uh, courtroom drama and stuff like that is from overhead. Yeah. And it's just little tiny figures, but they can draw a crowd real quick. Exactly. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so several days. Three judges for some reason. I, guess. I don't get that. One either. judge. I, I don't know. But so three or a few days later, Boss Storm is on trial, and the DA is telling him like, you know, the court will attempt to prove that you are head of all the rackets. And Boss Storm's like, Psh, that's a lie. You're not going to mm. get me to do that. He goes, you're trying to frame me. That's what you're trying to do. But then a bee flies swiftly at the <laughs> enraged Boss Storm. So, so, and the bee stops Storm's violent outburst. By stinging him again. No, I, it doesn't say that it Wait, stings he him. says ow. But then it goes, yes, yes, I confess. Oh, I my admit God, everything. because of a Get bee. Get out of here. Because of the bee. And minutes later, the Why do you need a superhero if learning. you've got a bee like this? Well, I'm about to tell you something better about the bee okay. once we get right, to let's, a let's few more of these adventures. The By but the way, in nature, a bee stings you once, it dies. Yeah. Just letting you guys know. Well, that's not the case here, Mike. Uh, and minutes later, the jury comes Super back deep. and like, yep, he Boss Storm is guilty. Boss Hog. Everybody celebrates. The DA says, hey, Rick, you did a great job helping me out. And he's like, oh, you don't say. And about that time, a bee flies by. And he goes, yeah, it's a bee. And that's how we <laughs> end this one. 
Um, Wait. Holy crap. That's the end of it? Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, they got Boss Storm yeah. was found guilty. Yeah. And then the DA keeps telegrams. getting telegrams from people about yeah. how grateful they are. And then the guy gets stung by a bee. Well, he doesn't. It just it just hums by. Yow! It's a bee. Like, oh, it's a bee. Wow. What That's an a, amazing adventure. So. A guy who pulls read, a bee out of his crotch. I read about five. It's the side of his crotch, Mike. Okay. Um, I read about what is, five. Who is that person? Uh, I don't know. Oh, that's Angel, Is maybe? that Neon? Or Neon? The unknown. Hercules. Oh, maybe it's the Red unknown in the Tyrants of Doom. Those look like Tyrants yeah. of Doom. Oh, look at the Nazi looking dude. Yeah. yeah. Strange oh, twins. Oh, strange twins weird again. Tales. Oh, or maybe that's Jack and Jill Detectives. Jack and Jill Detectives. X5 Blaze Super Agent. Spartan. Wow. So Oh my God. The Red B now is eating bones. The rest of these kind of quickly. Because as you could see from our first main story of how most of these are going to shape up, it's it's the same story in a sense of uh, he's it's trying always to take down huh? something. Yeah. yeah, and this one, it's the city rich. Uh, there's an influenza epidemic <laughs> that's ravaging the city. Uh, Here's the thing. People are passing out so fast, they just let them down the street where they are, yeah. right? Well, that's the 40s for you. Yep. I don't know. Um, and Rick is just essentially, he asked the DA, like, hey, we got to find something to do. And the DA is like, we don't have the money to be able to pay for it all, like for all the treatment that we need. Uh, because it's all gone into the pockets of Al Sneed's man. Oh, not Al Sneed. Graft. There's graft again. There's a lot of grafting. Grifting and grafting. Hospital appropriations in the hands of ward healers. Ward healers? What the hell's a ward healer? Don't know. Okay. Um, but these evil men are all like, uh, look at they want go. a toast, and they're singing like he's a jolly good fellow to Al Sneed because uh -huh. he's bled the city dry with all this influenza thing. Great job, Yeah, he's like, here's to the taxpayers. May they continue to shell out. I think we've made enough dough to take over the next city. Okay, let, 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 small break here. Yeah. Um, it's the 40s. Yep. Um, at, when was uh, the Depression? Uh, 32 okay. to... It lasted like eight years or something, right? I mean, it was to, a while. Yeah. To, or maybe it was maybe 29. So, so the stock market crashed Black Fridays in 29. Okay. I'm going to say you at least ran through 30. So we're still target. feeling yeah. the repercussions of that. Yeah, we're at, we're not too far the removed The Nazis are marching across the globe. We yeah. haven't joined the war yet, nope. but still, obviously, there's influences here. All these people are dying in the street, and what he's going to do is take all their money. Yep. If they have any. Yep. I'm just thinking, why aren't you hitting up people that have actual money? instead? Of, why is it always the little people who are dying in the streets? You're going to take their money. Because it's not a I guess it's story. the worst thing. Yeah, I guess. Okay. It's, uh, yeah, 29 to 30. Well, look at that skeleton over there and steal his paint. So, actually, Mike, if it's 1929 to 1939, it's considered the Great Depression. Okay. So, this is one year so after. We're, so, yeah. Yeah, barely out of it. Yeah. So. Can you uh, imagine how many criminals and crooks came out of that? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, what with this epidemic, there won't be enough people left in town to tax. And then glad like, we don't well, that's have... fine. We'll move to Carter City next and tax all them. I'm glad we don't have these kind of politicians these days. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, they're kind of uh, uh, Rick and the DA are discussing what they're going to do. And Red B tells them, don't worry about it, man. I'm sure that the uh, uh, we'll figure something out. And as mm. soon as he leaves, the Red B calls the DA and tells him, don't worry. At midnight tonight, I'm going to bring you enough money to pay for all that serum, right? Serum. They call it serum. Too. Yeah. He decides he's going to go visit. Um, <laughs> it's always the B. This is the dumbest guy. It, this may be. I, this is stupider than the than the guy who learned to fly. Black Condor? Right? Yeah. You think this is dumber than Black Condor? I think it's dumber than he Black Condor. He taught himself to fly by yeah. flapping his arms. Yeah, Mike. this guy stops criminals with a single B. And gymnastics moves. Well, that's true. He's, and his pirate sleeves. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, there's okay. more to him than Never just mind. the B. And we haven't gotten to the best part about the B yet, Mike. This guy. Um, no neck. But so the Red B shows up to Al's needs and yeah. he tells him he does like again, he never has to <laughs> like worry about when criminals have guns because the B always stings their hand. It's a, you we've know, had two issues and back to back issues. That's how we're getting. It's like one of those guns. old westerns, you know, that the guy just shoots him in the hand. Yeah. You know. Well, he's got the B for that. This is, this is oh, man. This is dumb. Then after he gets stung. Al Sneed tells him, here, take my dough. Take my dough. Just and throws Red all B the money goes, at him. Red B goes, there must be a catch to it. Uh -huh. And then the very next panel, suddenly Sneed lashes out. And he, like, swings at him. 
And then the very next panel, now look here, I haven't got time to play with you. Like, it's very quickly, I like, here, take my money. And he punches him, and then he, like, grabs him. <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. I like the pacing of the sentences. Now look here, I haven't time to play with you. It's very much, like, my favorite, and it's still silly, and I watch it. Uh, I need $100,000 pronto, he says. <laughs> my favorite Mary <laughs> Melody, like, cartoon yeah. is the Dover Boys one. Oh, yeah. And, like, that. they yeah. all talk like that. The, the three like, three three brothers. The three one of brothers. really stupid and looks like a, looks like a sailor. They're right? all stupid. Yeah. Yeah, no, the the sailor is the one that just will randomly, like, walk through. Da, 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 yeah, he's, da, the, he's tall, but yeah. he's also dumpy. Yeah, they're, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then... Uh, uh unhand her damn backslide damn backslide yeah. is the villain this cartoon's from the 30s and the fact that i remember this is just anyway uh you know why you remember it because it's so it different it's, it's so does. different than all the other ones well i just re- unhand her damn backslide it's just, unhand her damn back because he, he like says it to the stuffed moose and he says sure. it to the bear on the before he finally gets it yeah that's the simple thing good man. stuff man anyway um he tells this dude that he needs a hundred thousand dollars pronto and he tells him, I haven't got it. And he's like, uh-huh. well, where's your safe? And he's like, it's only got a few thousand in bonds. In bonds. And he's like, I'll take that still. Very bonds. So he takes it to leave. And then he decides, I'm just going to go to his safe houses. And he goes to his safe houses and he takes care of all the other Falls bad guys there. And he, I'm making sure it does. It hasn't said it yet. Mm. Uh, no. And so he gets all the money from that. Here it is. <laughs> um, sock. And so. Punches a guy and it says sock. It does. But uh, he shows up. He makes a joke at first when he breaks into this like their waterfront like main hideout. Yeah. They're like, "Who is it?" And he's like, "It's the tax collector, boys." And oh, like, oh, boy. the red bee. And there's like a m- table full of money they've been counting. Yeah. He just like tosses them around and comes to you know I just, steal I feel the like money I, from them. I just feel like I'm reading the Bible here. You know, this is where Jesus upended the the oh, table. Oh, in the temple. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Except I don't think he like threw them around like this. Well, but Jesus wore similar pants. May, I don't remember that, but maybe. Oh, okay. oh uh, something else we haven't pointed out. Mike, what color is his mask this issue? Uh, it's red in places. Yep, and yeah. it was black last time. Yep. Here's the second thing about the bee that we haven't got to. A buzzing sound warns the red bee, and oh. red bee says, what does he say, Mike? Thanks, Michael. I know what you mean. That's right. So the His bee is named name Michael. His name is Michael. Michael the Bee. Michael the Bee. Why would it be like Barry or Bob? I don't know. It's a Michael. Some it's alliteration. Mike the Bee. Mike um, the Bee. Who apparently just buzzes by him to let him know, hey, there's somebody behind <laughs> you. Cool. So I love how the buzzing has different meanings. Yes. Different Sometimes it means there's a guy things. coming. Sometimes it means I'm hungry. Exactly. Sometimes it means, oh, i got to take a bee dump. You just... <laughs> Uh, it's just nice to know that Rick and Michael have yeah. a way to communicate. Very special. Very so special. he does. He shows back up. The Red Bee ends up taking the money back to the DA's office. Um, there's a little stupid point of where like they the they have cops waiting outside the office because the yeah. DA decides he's going to try to catch the Red Bee. Yeah. And they hear something going on inside the office and they barge in and they realize, oh, no, it's just Rick Riley, his assistant. Stupid like, what are you Rick doing Riley. Here? And they're like, all right, we'll go wait back outside. And then they see like a shadow down the hall. And they're like, oh, we must. That's got to be the Red B. And they go to stop him. And it's Rick Riley again. Oh. And they're like, okay, you guys have made a bad habit out of this. They're like, oh, I bet you he's in the DA's office. And they go back to the (laughs) DA's office and there's the money bags all in the office. These are terrible criminals. Well, no, this is the cops that are waiting out for them. Same thing. Yeah, and then the next day, like he was like, we got all the money. We weren't able to catch the red bee. He's and got a big bandage on his head. He does because he's been tackled. Yeah, multiple he's been times. tackled several times. Yeah. And the DA asked him like, "Oh, what's wrong?" He's like, "Just a case of mistaken identity." The police thought I was the red bee, <laughs> and he <laughs> winks. <laughs> but I assume he's winking at us as the reader. He is. But you have to think in the story, the DA is seeing him wink too. <laughs> just looking at him and he goes he's like the police thought i was the red b and he winks at the da and the da probably goes he's like rick are you you okay are are you the red b (laughs) i know you're hitting the head pretty hard are you okay yeah (laughs) so the other stories again that i covered are very similar to these the ones that were kind of funny there's this one where uh, a guy gets killed for taking a picture that is hilarious no that's not funny oh gets killed for taking a picture Okay. Um, what do you take a picture of? Of uh, the this guy using city resources oh, to build a house. Oh, there you go. Uh, so that's that one. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Red mask. Yeah, red mask. But See, look so, there. So you've not met my little friend Michael before. There you go. I am <laughs> instead going to use the rest three issues that I have to just showcase Michael and how great yeah. he is. 
and also just the weird things in these Maybe issues. he was winking at the bee. <laughs> you think the bee can see that wink? Maybe. Probably. He could buzz by him and tell him what's going on. So, yeah. He's like, maybe you've not met my friend Michael. So, like, buzz. so Rick and Michael are like a ta- <laughs> the tag team you never knew you didn't need. I'm just yeah. Red B. Um, anyway. It's they, more graphs. It's more griffs. It's more graphs. It's more griffs. Yeah. It's more oh, here we him go. getting captured. Oh, here. Okay. This is one. Oh, so, this, this is one. getting good. So, he goes to hunt down. Uh, these evil men, the guys uh-huh. who he thinks, or he's trying to figure out who killed this photographer. Yeah. So he shows up at this house, and as soon as he like runs, there's it just says suddenly there's a blinding electric flash, and he just passes out. They, it's they all the yard. Him? It's a trip wire of some sort that uh, electrocutes okay. him. Right. Red B goes down. So they take him inside the cabin. They have other plans for yeah. him. Yeah. While they're there, they tie him up to a chair, and he's like, uh, and they decide to leave and <laughs> set the place on fire. Right. Yeah. Well, they got him in the attic. They got him in the attic, and they're going to set the house on fire. It'll be worse than that chair and a lot hotter. Ha ha. Ha ha. Then the Red Bee notices a razor blade on the table, and he's like, if only I could reach it. Uh Well, a deep breath. Oh, no. And three bees are released from his belt. And get this, Mike. Seeing their master, uh, their master's plight, the bees instinctively fly for the razor blade. And <laughs> thanks, boys. I'll bee- be free in a jiffy now. That's right. The bees fly the razor blade over to him, and he cuts himself out. So you and got escapes the house. You got Michael. You got Matthew. And then the third one, he's a little slower. His name's Bob. That's it. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be Michael, Daryl, and his other brother Daryl. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he he lets more bees. It's not just Michael that hangs out in his belt, and that's the thing I want to question too. Do they just hang out in the belt until he needs them? I guess so. Makes me think they're robot bees. Maybe. Well, not at this time. They're real bees. They oh, Michael. Okay. Right. Um, he has to drive on a railroad <laughs> with his tires. <laughs> it's so weird. <sighs> One slip and I'll crash into the side of the mountain. But he's driving his well, car. Well, then get off the tracks, exactly. dumbass. Um, he catches up to the train and he jumps by himself. Here's, here's what I want to know, too, Mike, yeah. right? He's driving alone by himself. Uh-huh. I'll put it on. I'll put on the automatic driving device That's in his not car. A thing, but sure. So he can get step out onto the hood of the car uh-huh. that is apparently still c- here's what i want to know too you see where the train is there mike yeah he's turned on the automatic driving uh-huh. device when he's uh-huh. still hundreds of feet behind the train right which means the train has to be speeding forward in this automatic driving sure. device. and i know before we get into this this is a story it is fake it is not real mm-hmm. i know that i'm not seriously upset about this yeah, but i am it has to be speeding forward. If a car with an automatic driving device is going seventy miles an hour, exactly. But I'm track. saying, like, it, it's it's make it's going fast enough to catch up. Uh huh. He dive. It's gonna crash into the back of the train. I like how he says "made it" before he actually made it. Yeah, he's just in the air, yeah. hovering, he just made jumps. it. Jumps. But he dives from the hood of the car what onto the back shit. of the train. Uh, and to me, I think that that car is going to crash into the back of the train. He's got anyway, something wrong with his butt. And cause it to derail. So, you see that? He's got one cheek, and then the other one kind of goes right oh, into yeah. his leg. Oh, yeah. He's got a very small butt, too. He's got a small butt, but the he's right like, cheek does seem like something. He's got like one of those there. Hank Hill butts. He does have a Hank Hill butt. Yeah. Well, he finds them all, and he's like, oh, it looks like you guys saw a ghost. He uh-huh. punches them. I'm sure Michael he helps out some. He punches them. Some other stuff here's, happens. Here's how this one ends, though. <laughs> next, The next day. At the district attorney's office, look, chief, you got fan mail. And he's like, oh, how popular am he I? He brings three guys in a giant bag. In a giant trash bag. <laughs> and he's like, but look inside. Oh, confession the, from a man named Fred. The president of Graf Construction Company. Graf. Sealed and delivered. And here's a note. Uh, it's a full confession from a man named Fred. Oh, God. And we can, and we can take all the credit for this, Riley. A- and he goes, that's right, Chief. I'm sure the Red Bee won't mind. And he looks at the camera. And he looks at the camera again because yeah. this guy is the worst at keeping secrets. He is terrible at um, it. A lot of these guys are, though. Here's the thing I don't get to, though. It's a signed confession. Why don't the guys just talk when they're like <laughs> out of the bag? Like, hey. Hey, get me out of this bag. I can't breathe. Um, there's one where there's this doctor that they come across mm-hmm. who is. Oh, this one's very different from the other ones. It, well, they the change The weird panels a bit. and stuff. Um. But, oh, and he's fighting a swami. Yeah, and he. But that's the thing is like he is able to like take over people's minds by having them touch his magic like um, ball. Excuse me. I'm sorry. His um, <laughs> his what do you his crystal ball? Okay. 
Um, that's very different. Like when he's looking to try to tell them about the future, they touch it and like a needle comes out and like pokes them. Oh, and perfect. And injects them with some drug that kind of puts them under mind control by the doctor here. Yeah, can you scroll up for a second? Yeah. Okay, when we first see the guy, he looks like a white dude in a turban. Yeah. Then you go down to the next panel. He's gray. That's a different dude. Oh, okay. All right. Is it? Oh, no. I see what you're I think saying. It's the same guy. He's gray now. Yeah, no. I think it's That's so them. weird. I think it's them trying to use color and obviously yeah, being a bit it. racist. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, I don't know of those people that are gray, though. That's, that's I, a weird. I, I, yeah. yeah. But I think they're trying to go for a. Uh, uh, it's like a Middle Eastern thing, I would imagine. That's what they're trying to yeah, do, yeah. yeah. But, uh, again, it's just, well, it's all of it's from the 40s and two. The way it's printed just does not Sure, work. sure. Um, but then, so, you see the stripes are gone from red. Yeah, he's got white pants also, now. on this, it always bugged me. It doesn't look like his mask's on. It looks like he's wearing a red headband Bug in these panels. You. Look at that. There, there. Yeah. He's just wearing a red headband. Yeah, yeah. The it's mask far, changes so much. It's far too up. On his forehead. And then down here, he's got gray hair. Yeah. That's neat. There's just no consistency, but he's jumping and lunging for people. Uh, it's the same. I mean, it's the same stories for a lot of you these. Know, then. If the you could make this into a thing, that would be so funny that everything changes. There's zero continuity throughout the story. It's yes. just different every single time. Every time. Some of it just looks like it was just highlighted on, like yeah. the mask. Like it's not colored in correctly. Yeah. The coloring is off on all of this. Nobody's Coloring's standing rough. in lines yeah, on stuff. It's rough. Um, but they end up stopping the doctor Mara here. Uh, the thing that I liked about this one is he has a suitcase that has a secret panel that springs open and it can take pictures in this box. Um, I, also, I, I want to, can, can you scroll back up for a second? Yeah. I want to point out the greatest quote in this whole thing. Huh? I felt a slight prick and now I feel as though I were in a fog. <laughs> That's from the that crystal to, ball. Well, yeah. that happened to me in high school. Too. Oh, I, I got gotcha. you. Felt a slight prick. Uh, the thing that I love too is with all the problems with the discrepancies and everything here, yeah, Mike. Yeah. There's a lot of science that they felt needing to do because he explains it here. When you placed your hand on this ball, Dr. Mara pressed a lever and a barely visible needle emerged. Barely visible. But they have, look, tube. Oh, yeah. Needle. They, have a, they, have they have the diagram to show you how the science <laughs> works. Here's needle. Here's tube. And they do that in the next uh, episode too. Oh, wow. Look at him. Is he underwater? Yes. Oh, now he's got an all red suit, and yep. his arms are yellow, and that's a whole and different guy. And it is guy. clear plastic, though. Uh huh. This was the last one I read, yeah. and it does take place underwater. He doesn't have a mask there at all. No mask. So uh, that would tell you, hey, the guy he's fighting's missing a tooth. <laughs> is he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. he is. Yeah. Um, this one has to deal with a boat. Here's one thing that I want to know. And from the DA's office, because you talked about continuity yeah. and just everything following. Yeah. We start this adventure from the DA's office. The red bee appears. Uh-huh. In and his now yellow pants. Yep. And he dives down below. Uh-huh. Because oh, his boots are red now, too, not green. They are. And he dives down below because it says, like, they're leaving uh -huh. here. I'm going. Like, the DA is leaving for the day. And as he leaves, it says suddenly a car appears. <laughs> how, do they, how does he know that car's following the and DA? And that's where he's like, great Scots, that car's following the DA. So that's why he changes to the red bee. Yeah, and he dives out. out a window. And he follows them. Like a bee. Okay. Yeah. And he finds that it takes them to this boat. <laughs> <laughs> and as he goes to step on the boat, as uh -huh. soon as his feet hit the dock, it triggers a bell. Mm. Uh, tells under, him under the ship. Yeah, around. You're there. So they wait. And it like, leads into a fight. Or, uh, I like how their weapon is a pipe wrench. It is. Okay. <laughs> Quickly, the gangsters assemble behind the door, ready to crush their unknown visitor. A pipe wrench. Uh, but, suddenly, but this other dude's got a machine gun. He does. Suddenly, like a Tommy gun. Suddenly, the red bee comes hurling upon the thugs. Uh -huh. Attaboy, Michael. I'm right behind you. Ow, Ow I'm stung. stung. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Michael always taking care of business. And then for the sure. bee stings the guy from the operation game. He does. Okay. <laughs> Michael. Look at his hair. Michael makes a landing. Yeah. Good so, job, Michael. Uh, but it's not enough because somebody sneaks oh. up with a lead pipe and hits him on the back. That's of the not head. what it says. It says they oh. hit. They strike the red bee with a heavy whirling steel pipe. What the? What does that mean? I think that's the way it's. Is moving. it just like he's? It was he, whirling by. Okay. All right. 
That's a like, weird sentence. Yeah, and they're like, ah, he's out. Yeah. And while he's out, they toss him. They they <laughs> drive to a place that says swordfish. That's where all the swordfish hang out. Um, like in the middle of the ocean, there's just a sign that says swordfish. Song Not plural. Bud, remember us to the fishes. Not plural, singular. Swordfish. swordfish. That's where that one swordfish yep. is. Well, don't worry. Red B is going to use that to his advantage, and he mm. waits for him to swim by him, yeah. and he holds his arms out for him to cut through the uh, ties. Yeah. He's like, ah, just missed me. That is the weirdest looking through swordfish. Me. Then, here we go, Michael. I, I, I have Michael on my head because of the beat. Here we go, yeah, Mike. And sure. so he swims up to the cover, and he goes, ah, there they go. I've got a long swim ahead of me to catch up. We see the boat in the distance. Uh, After many hours <laughs> of long and tiresome swimming, this man's gonna be dead. the Red Bee arrives at the docks. Many hours. I'm going to give them a surprise they'll never forget. Uh-oh. So he swims for hours, Still Mike. his pants on. And it goes, the Red Bee quietly climbs onto the barge uh-huh. great scott they're gone yeah because they've you've been gone swimming for hours the da i'll i'll have to drive to catch up with them uh, and he is able to catch up with them and he goes hey you know like he's speeding through traffic and he gets out and then it goes the da's office is on the 20th floor i haven't much time i have to get there in a hurry mike i bring that up elevator? again because where did we start at uh in the uh in the da's office so we jump down. Oh, yeah. We punch a guy out. We oh. drive to a barge. We get thrown we into right the fish. To the we office. swim for hours <laughs> just to wind up back at the DA's yeah, office. That's fantastic. You want to yeah. talk about running circles. Yeah. It's exactly what they've done here. Yeah, buzzing circles. But sure. Buzzing circles. Yeah. And then we get to maybe <laughs> the best device that I got into. I don't know. There's 19 other appearances of the yeah. Red Bee in the 40s. Yeah. It could have gotten better. Yeah. But he pulls out this little contraption. There's no way it got better. Uh, they added a woman later. I do know that. Oh, a few okay, seconds good. later, the Red Bee's alto gainer is all set. And again, alto we have gainer. science, Mike. Gauge. We have a button, spring, spring and a gauge and a button. <laughs> we don't care that we just went around in circles and we wound up back at the DA's office. Our science is on point. Okay, wait a minute. He pulled a whole damn thing out just to shoot him up to the 20th floor. <laughs> and here's the this, thing. This building doesn't have an elevator? Or steps? He fits himself in the tube. <laughs> and it goes, now I'll put it on 400 feet and press the button. Right? Oh 400 God. feet. And then it goes, the red bee is hurtled into the air. 20, 30, 40 feet up he goes. I think there's some miscalculation. There is some miscalculation. He's going 400, and now he's at 40. I, I guess it only does, like, it has a 10% rule uh, of, like, I'll set it at 400. Like it's only going to get me 40. Uh, and he, yeah, it just you know what shoots would be better out. Is if he had a shitload of bees and they just buzzed him up to the yes. 20th floor. They just grab on. That would him. be cooler. You know, maybe he could take the bees and the, it's almost like the Wonder Twins or exactly. something. He takes the bees and he makes a parachute out of them or something, you know. But in this case, no, um, he just buzz. He barely hangs on there. Man, he thought he was a goner. He thought he was, but he is able to catch on. That seems to be a thing, too, of him thinking that he's got it before he's even there. That is a also, terrible the way to get up a, a, a building. The coloring, they said, forget the eyes. Yeah. We're just going to highlight Screw over all it. of it. Let's just go. Yeah. Uh, anyway, though, he does. He's able to. Oh, that's where it ends. I forgot. Yeah. It ends in one page. So as the Red Bee opens the door, a smile of relief comes to his face because they haven't killed the DA yet. Oh, and he's happy gosh. about that. But um, the bee, a bee comes in to distract them, per usual, it's probably Michael, and he ends up breaking everybody up, catching all the criminals, knocking them out, and as he's going to leave... Why does he say you're first, number 26? I thought that was the boat's name, but apparently it's a dude's name. Okay. I don't know. Um, I'm Mr. 26. This is my wife, Mrs. 27. Yeah, and so after he beats them all up, and he goes to leave, and the DA's trying to hunt him down, and he's like, I'm going to see who you are, and he's like, come and get me, DA. And he runs out the window, and he's like, I got you. And about that time, he hits him. And he's like, well, I'll be, Riley. Didn't you see the red bee just run by here now? And he's like, oh, you're still trying to catch the the red bee. And he's like, no wisecracks. If it hadn't been for you, I would have had him. (laughs) All right, and that's where it ends. But it does end with the red bee and Michael. Mm. We'll be back in another thrilling issue of the next issue of Hit Comics. Although I did not read any more. They are there. But that is is uh, the red bee. This is rough, man. That is a rough, rough character. You didn't like the Red Bee? Well, I like it. I like it because it's so fanciful, yeah. but um, it's very stupid also. Oh, for the sure. The box that shoots him up, I think that's the stupid. I thought the bees were the bad part. No, it's that box. It's that clown box that shoots, shoots him, him up, up 20 floors. <laughs> 
I'm looking through here to Again, see if the, there's the any more. Again, the bad guys, how did they get to the 20th floor? The elevator, I'm That's assuming. That's what I'm saying, see? I will say that they do make the B itself kind of red sometimes. And effing big. It, just then, a small insect buzzes in. Michael, the pet of the red bee. So, Michael is a full-on Wait. pet. Oh, oh, okay. So, he's his pet. But, but it never yet, names the other ones. He never names the other ones. Huh. It's like the archangel, right? Yeah. Michael the red bee. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Um, well, that's dumb. Later, towards the later <laughs> episodes, I read that there's a woman that'll join him for like yeah. his. We're just scrolling through these. Yeah, uh, yeah. I can't remember her name, but like she just like appears Sally. to help him with the case, and he just like lets her be a part of it from then on. Good so God. then the stories are just like about Rick and Nancy. Oh, um, sure. Michael, he, he's feeling really. Michael probably slighted. gets a little upset. Yeah. yeah. But so anyway, that's the red bee. Um, the red bee can do it on his own, Buzz Buzz. <laughs> Uh, but there's a lot more to get into uh, with him if you wanted no, to go ahead and dive really into. But, okay, but I think sure. we covered the gist. That's, of it. It's the thing about I these. I wanted a good public domain. Like, well, that's the thing course. about these kind of comics. A, every story is basically exactly the it same. Is. It's just over and over and over and over and over. I guess. I guess you can't fault them on the consistency. No, the quality can't. maybe, but consistency. But no. Now, thanks. Oh, also later on, uh, they brought back the Red Bee as another character, and it's his granddaughter that oh. plays it, and she is like taking the Red Beet, and she's she has like a mech suit that like causes her to fly and stuff. For like real? That. Yeah. No more, no more springy box. No, let me see if I can find this clowns up real into quick the then. sky. Yeah, huh. I think uh, the new Red Bee. Um, the new Red Bee. The new Red Bee. Um, but the, the mauve bee. That is the Red Bee, uh, as I look up. You're looking up the granddaughter? The granddaughter, the new one. See, that's what she looks like now. Oh, wow. Good Lord. Yeah, it's a lot different. That's a big difference. Uh, Jenna Riley is her name. So it's owned by DC. Um, she got some badass looking bees. With I'm her sorry, too. grandniece or granddaughter of the original. First appeared in Uncle Sam and the Freedom Fighters number five. Oh, wow. In 2007. Wait, Uncle Sam and the Freedom Fighters is from 2007? Well, they redid it. Oh, okay. It came oh, out in 73. I yeah, I see the old one. It came out in 73, which is what he was brought back as a part of. And then they redid it in 2007. Yeah, that's kind of cool. That. I would watch an Uncle Sam and the Freedom Fighters movie. Yeah. Uh, James Gunn, you need to get on that. Uh, speaking of her, uh, Rick's grandniece, Jenna, <laughs> takes up the mantle of the Red Bee. She uses a mechanized battle suit. This is from Wikipedia, by the way. Um, and two robotic bees that can fire electricity. So that makes a lot more sense to me. She instead assists, of using real yeah. bees. Uh, she soon learns that the, over the course, Jenna is mutated by an alien insect colony mm. into a human bee hybrid. Sounds perfect. With the enhanced physical abilities, pheromone production capabilities, and antenna on her head. I would like to explore ha the pheromones. Yeah. Um, However, I don't know what you're using those her for. mind is later completely circumvented by the mutation. Oh. After trying to colonize the entire Earth, she is cured of her infliction when so it's like a venom Terrell thing. uses his new neon. Neon oh. was a neon is it that powers, other guy? I think so. Oh. To destroy the insect influence. By the series end, Jenna feels guilt over her actions and she eschews the superhero life to continue her work in the research field. Mm. So there is no more Red B. Okay. So Red Even B, Red B2 is gone. Yep, Red B2 is gone too. Well, Red I'm, B2, I'm sorry because I know that you really wanted Red B. More I Red would B. love to see a, 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 a reboot of the Red B. Okay. Yeah, that would be kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, I like the electric. I like the uh, robot bees. I think Ooh. that's much better because then there's no question of they die after they sting you once or whatever, yeah. you know, plus they can do extra shit. You yeah, know? for sure. Cause they're robots. Um, AI yeah. bees is what they AI would be bees. now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, that could, and they just go haywire and they do uh -huh. their own thing. Wasn't uh -huh. there, I feel like there was a black mirror episode about bees. Was it? About robot bees. Yeah. Robot bees? I think so. I think I missed that one. Eh. I don't know. What anyway, that, that is the red bee. That is this week's that episode. Was fun. Next week, we yeah. are going to dive into something that I know Mike will be excited about. The piss a peacemaker. <laughs> it's a six-issue series that just wrapped up uh, at the end of 2023. It's called Peacemaker Tries Hard, yeah. and we were going to cover those six issues next week then yeah. to dive into something more current. And if you, the beauty of it is, is if you've watched the James Gunn or DC EU DCU TV show. Mm -hmm. You should be fine to like that's what Very you should good. expect out of yeah. this peacemaker. He looks like like his look is that of John looks Cena. Like John Cena yeah. This is a book from the little bit I've read. 
um, is filled with absolute ridiculousness. It's a black label title, so it's you know it's yeah. we're probably gonna have a uh, more explicit uh, episode next week. Just to warn you there though too. Okay. And Mike, there is an appearance in issue four. Mm-hmm. Funny enough, there's there's multiple appearances, um, but the one that I wanted to there is an appearance of a character in issue four. That might be one of our first callbacks. It's to one of the first episodes we did. One of the ones we covered. One of the ones we covered. Huh. Uh, from back in the 80s. Yeah, don't character, tell me. Don't I'm tell not going to tell you, but yeah. it's a character that hadn't been seen since love then. It. And shows back up, but love we covered it, him way it, back it. in the day. So that and also another surprise in this series, too, that I think you'll appreciate, uh, funny enough. But So that is what we'll do next week. A lot of fun there. Uh, until next time, um, we appreciate you guys taking the time out to yeah, listen. Man. If you do have time, make sure to check out the Rogue Media Network family of podcasts. RogueMediaNetwork.com. And until next time, stay safe, everybody. Hey, got a con. Frozen, Frozen, heroes. Gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, heroes. Gonna tell you about. This has been a Rogue Media Network production.